Hey, what's going on? So today I just wanted to cover a few shortcuts that I discovered over the years of using Reaper that really helped speed up my workflow. So hopefully they'll help you guys out too. So I'm just going to kind of go over these in a random order. But before I start, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to be using Option and Command a bunch. But if you're on a PC, it's going to be Alt and Control for you. Just a heads up. So say if you're over here, if you hit W, that's going to bring you back to the beginning of the project. There's a lot of times before I figured that out that I would click and drag this and it would take like nine hours but yeah much quicker so this is the track control panel over here and if you hit command m that'll bring up the mixer here also the same shortcut is gonna close it so now back to the track control panel one thing i would do that would take forever say if i wanted to solo all of my drum tracks i would click individually one by one and that would also take like 97 hours if you click and drag it's much quicker like that and then also click and drag again and it'll unsolo everything and you can do that with mute and you can do that with record as well so much quicker that way instead of individually selecting you can also do that same click and drag in the mixer if you prefer to work in the mixer which I usually do same thing as far as soloing muting or arming tracks for a record. I think it's a bit easier in the mixer versus the track control panel. Another thing in the track control panel, if you click the effects button, it'll bring up all your effects on a certain track. But if you wanna temporarily bypass, you can just click this on off button here and it'll temporarily bypass them. You can turn them on or off. Uh, but if you want to just get rid of every plugin on that track, just hold Option and then click, and now they're all gone. If you want them back, Command Z, and then they're all back on there, just how they were before. Also, if you want to see, I, I know a lot of these plugins like Spiri Drummer or a lot of these guitar amp sim plugins eat up a lot of space so if you want to check how much space they're eating up and then see what you need to do as far as like if you mute a track it'll save you on some some space there so if you do uh option command p that'll bring up your performance meter and then you can kind of see what's going on if you scroll through everything what's eating up the most space here and then same thing to close it option command p all right now if we open up the mixer again when you're adjusting volumes here if you just want to audition different levels but you're not sure you actually want to change something when you're mixing just hold option and you can bring it up or down as long as you're holding option just let go of the mouse and it'll bring it back to where it was which is pretty cool you can come all the way down and it'll go right back you won't lose where you were before and another thing that's cool is say if i wanted to copy this eq setting over to a different track just using this EQ for an example, but you can do this with all the plugins in the mixer. If you just click and drag it over, it'll copy it with all of its settings. So that's pretty badass. And then once again, if you hold option, it'll delete any plugin. And if I shift click, it'll bypass. So see how it bypasses up here. So that's pretty quick too if you're auditioning different sounds. Say if I had two EQs on here and I want to do audition, say REQ versus, uh, I use Voxengo quite a bit. So if I want to audition different EQs, see which one I like better, uh, the shift click really helps just quickly bypass them when you're in the mixer. Yeah, another cool thing back in the track control panel, if you just want to quickly transfer over all of the plugins on a track to another track, say for right and left guitar, if you want the same guitar tone, you can just click and drag and it'll copy all the effects from that track over so that's super quick and convenient there so yeah that versus coming over here and dragging them like that it's still pretty quick but takes a bit longer let's check out some midi from the midi editor i'm actually just going to create over here a new midi item so for the longest time i was super smart and uh i would arm a MIDI track to record. I would record and then stop. That's how I'd create a MIDI item. And it took forever because say if I wanted from bar 35 to bar 47, I would have to wait in real time. But then discovered if you hold command 
and just click and drag, it'll draw it in for as long as you want. Way quicker. Then double click to open it. And there's a bunch of stuff in here as well that really changed once I learned how to do it. So, for instance, say if I wanted a double kick roll here with 16th notes, before you would just double click to enter a note and I would literally do that all the way across. And I would take like another, you know, 947 hours. So instead of doing that, if you hold option and command, it brings up this brush and you can just, just drag them over like that so much quicker. And then also with the deleting, if I say, if I draw some stuff in here with the deleting, you can double click like that. So I was doing that for a while as well, and that just takes forever, and then I discovered the right click and drag so much quicker like that. You just select everything, and then either hit delete, or you can do command X, and that'll cut and save it to your clipboard for later if you want to paste it somewhere. Along those lines, if, if I draw out notes here, and I want to copy those, if I hold command and drag them over, you can copy them as many times as you want. Say if I want to copy just these two sections here, select them both, drag them over wherever you need them. Super easy. And another thing, this is probably going to apply more for other VSTIs that you're using like synths, pianos, orchestral. If you want to transpose stuff, instead of highlighting, clicking and dragging like that, they can get shifted around and super annoying. If you instead select the notes you want to transpose and then hit the T key. Now you can come over here and choose your options, all notes. I usually do selected notes just so I can highlight and then transpose only the ones I've selected. But from here, say if I wanted to move it up an octave, you need to know a little bit of theory here, but nothing too crazy though. So if I type in 12, it's going to bring it up an octave, but the cool thing is it's not going to shift the notes at all. So it's going to keep them exactly where they were. And this is super handy if you've played stuff in and they're not perfectly on the grid. If they move slightly, it's gonna sound much different than if they hadn't moved at all. So this is cool, and you can go as much as you want, 24, it's gonna bring it up two octaves. And same thing if you go minus 12, it'll bring it down an octave. If you wanna go down two octaves, minus 24, same thing. So, super handy there. Now, if you shift click, you can humanize the timing yourself. So let's shift click here, make them off a little bit. Same with these. All right, so now if I zoom in, you can see they're not perfect like how these are here. So now if I select these and say I want, say if I played this in and this is how it came out, but I wanted it to be a little bit more in time, just hit the Q key on the notes that you've selected and that's gonna quantize these. Now, you can play with the strength. That's gonna determine how strong the quantize is. So if you don't want it super computery, then just don't have it at 100 and bring it down a bit. Because you can see here, they're not, they're still not perfect, but they're much tighter than they were before. So you can play with that. And I always, instead of use grid here, I always use manual so I can get in there a little bit more and adjust it how I like. All right, so we'll come back to where they were before and we'll hard quantize them. If you want that to save, you got to come down here and hit OK. If you just close out, it's just going to go back to where they were like that. So just hit OK. Okay, so now they're 100% on the grid here. So say if if you've programmed some stuff in, you want it to be a little more humanized, but you don't want to go in there by hand, which I would recommend doing anyway. But if you just want to do this quickly, hit the H key, and that'll bring up your humanized notes. And now you can adjust the timing from 0 to 100. You can do the same thing with the velocities, 0 to 100. And then the timing bias is basically, if you have it to the left, it's going to be dragging a bit. So all the notes, when you humanize the timing, they'll naturally drag. And if you have it on the right here, they're going to rush a little bit, depending on how much you set it to, either plus or minus 100. So yeah, for instance, they're perfectly on the grid now. And check out the velocities down here. It's gonna adjust the velocities so they're not as robotic. And then it's also gonna do the same thing with the timing, if you look here. So usually I'll just do this kind of sparingly 
with the timing and velocities and then just come down here and then further further adjust by hand depending on the instrument and another thing with copy paste like we were doing in the MIDI editor you can do that out here too say if you like this MIDI item here and you wanted the same thing you can hold command click and drag it over so that's super quick or highlight the sections you want say this and that and then command C and then you scroll to wherever you want it click command V will paste it yeah so hopefully you guys found some of that valuable and got something out of that I know a lot of these when I first started and discovered these they really helped me speed up my workflow so hopefully that was helpful let me know if you like more videos like this see you guys later